Hi, my friends. Today, I want to present you a new story. Enjoy watching it. I've always heard stories about the city, how it buzzes with life day and night, how its streets pulse with opportunity and danger in equal measure. But nothing could have prepared me for the suffocating wall of noise and people that hit me the second I stepped off the bus. It was like stepping into another world, one that swallowed you whole if you didn't keep up. Back home, the most excitement you get was a slow summer's afternoon, with the hum of cicadas, the wind rustling through the tall grass, and maybe the occasional car rumbling down the dirt road. Here, everything was too much, too loud, too fast, too big. People brushed past me like I wasn't even there, lost in their own worlds, their faces blurred together in a sea of strangers. It felt like I'd been dropped into the center of a storm, one I had no idea how to navigate, but I couldn't let it show. I gripped the handle of my old suitcase until my knuckles turned white, trying to steady my shaking hands. I took a deep breath and forced my feet to move. One step, then another. I had a mission. I didn't come here for nothing. A few months ago, this would have felt impossible. I was just a girl from a dusty town no one cared about, with a mother too sick to work and barely enough money to buy groceries each week. But then the letter came and everything changed. It arrived in a worn, cream-colored envelope, addressed to me in neat, unfamiliar handwriting. Inside was a note from a man named Nicholas Kane, a businessman who promised me a job and a place to stay in the city. A fresh start, the letter said. A chance at a better life. It seemed too good to be true, but I didn't have the luxury of doubting it. There were no other options. I kept that letter folded up in the pocket of my coat, feeling its weight every time I reached for it like it was some kind of lifeline. Nicholas Kane was my ticket out of the life I was drowning in, my only way out. But now, standing in the heart of the city, doubt crept in. What if this was all a mistake? The address Nicholas had given me was on the far side of town. I didn't have money for a taxi, so I walked, each step a battle against the growing anxiety in my chest. The deeper I went into the city, the more out of place I felt. The streets grew wider, the buildings taller, the people richer. My clothes, simple, practical, well-worn, stood out like a sore thumb amidst the polished shoes and designer bags of the people bustling around me. I wrapped my coat tighter around myself, as if that would somehow make me invisible. When I finally reached the building, I stopped dead in my tracks. It wasn't what I expected at all. The place was huge, towering over the street with its sleek, glass windows and stone pillars. It looked like something out of a movie, not the kind of place a girl like me belonged. I could feel the weight of every eye on me as I approached, even if no one was actually watching. I hesitated for a moment, staring at the grand wooden door in front of me. This was it. Once I stepped inside, there was no going back. But back to what? A life where every day was a battle just to survive? No. I couldn't turn around now. I raised my hand and knocked, the sound of it echoing louder than I expected. My heart was in my throat, pounding so hard I thought it might burst. A few agonizing seconds passed, and then the door creaked open. A man stood in the doorway, tall and sharply dressed, his suit tailored perfectly to his broad frame. He had the kind of face you'd expect to see on magazine covers, handsome but cold, with sharp cheekbones and eyes that seemed to see straight through you. Emily Donovan, he asked, his voice low, steady. I swallowed hard and nodded. Yes, sir. He gave me a once-over, his gaze lingering just long enough to make me feel exposed. Then, without a word, he stepped aside and gestured for me to enter. The inside of the house was even more intimidating than the outside. The floors were polished marble, and a grand staircase wound up to the second floor like something out of a fairy tale. If fairy tales were written in shades of grey and steel. There was no warmth here, no life. Just cold, stark elegance. Nicholas Kane, he said, extending his hand. Welcome to your new home. I stared at his hand for a moment before taking it, my grip too tight, too nervous. His skin was cold, like everything else in this house. Thank you, Mr. Kane, I said quietly, though the words felt hollow in my mouth. Nicholas studied me for a moment, his expression unreadable. You'll be working for me directly, he said, his voice smooth but with an edge that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. There are certain expectations you'll need to meet. I trust you understand that. 
I nodded, though I wasn't sure I understood anything at that moment. The days blurred together inside Kane's mansion. My routine was strict, and the tasks Ruth assigned left no room for mistakes. I felt more like a shadow than a person, drifting silently through the halls, polishing the already gleaming floors, arranging fresh flowers that no one seemed to notice. Despite the luxury around me, I felt trapped. The walls seemed to close in, the silence thick and oppressive. One morning, as I was scrubbing the marble staircase, I heard footsteps approaching. I turned to see Nicholas Kane descending, his gaze fixed on me, cold and calculating as always. Emily, he said smoothly, stopping just above me, you're settling in well, I trust? Yes, Mr. Kane, I replied, my voice barely above a whisper. His presence always made my skin crawl, though I couldn't explain why. Good. I expect nothing less. His eyes lingered on me a moment longer before he turned and walked away. Nicholas's son David led a dissolute lifestyle. He was constantly drunk and molested me. I somehow managed to dodge his so-called courtship. Later that day, as I was dusting the library, I heard another voice, a man, but kinder, softer. I looked up and saw a stranger, dressed just as impeccably as Kane, but with a warmth in his eyes that I hadn't seen in weeks. You must be Emily, he said, offering a smile. I'm Daniel. I nodded, unsure how to respond. I'm Kane's business partner, Daniel explained, his tone light. Don't worry, I'm not here to inspect your work. Just visiting. His gaze softened and for the first time since arriving, I felt something close to relief. You seem different from the others. I said cautiously, testing the waters. Daniel chuckled. Kane's world is a gilded cage, beautiful but suffocating. His eyes met mine and for a moment, it felt like he understood exactly what I was feeling. I nodded, understanding more than I wanted to. The day after meeting Daniel, I couldn't shake the feeling of warmth his presence had left behind. In a house so cold and detached, he was a flicker of light in the shadows. I was dusting the windows in the parlor when I heard footsteps behind me. David chose the moment when his father was not at home and constantly made attempts to humiliate me with his harassment and offensive statements. Emily, came that soft, familiar voice. I turned and there he was, Daniel, standing in the doorway. You always seem to be working, he said with a smile, though his tone was laced with something like concern. I don't have much choice, I replied, glancing around to make sure Ruth wasn't lurking nearby. He stepped closer, his eyes never leaving mine. This place, it's not what you expected, is it? I shook my head, unable to hide the truth. No, it's suffocating. Daniel nodded, as if he understood exactly how I felt. I've been around Kane long enough to see what he does to people. He offers a life that seems perfect on the outside, but it's a trap. You're not the first to feel caged. I hesitated, the words catching in my throat. Why are you telling me this? He leaned in slightly, lowering his voice. Because you don't belong here, Emily. You deserve more than this. For a moment, I felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe there was a way out of this life after all. But just as quickly, doubt crept back in. Kane's grip was strong, and the consequences of crossing him were terrifying. I can help you, Daniel said softly. If you trust me, his eyes, so kind and honest, made me want to believe him. But trust was dangerous in a place like this. Days passed, but Daniel's words lingered in my mind like an unshakable echo. You deserve more than this. They rattled around as I scrubbed floors, as I served tea to the guests who never acknowledged me, as I tiptoed through the hollow halls. The mansion felt darker, colder than before, and the more I thought about it, the more the walls seemed to close in. One evening, as a storm raged outside, I found myself standing at the large window in the parlor, watching the rain beat against the glass. The sound of thunder felt like it was inside me, rumbling through my bones. Emily. I jumped, spinning around to see Kane standing in the doorway. His cold eyes gleamed in the dim light, studying me. You seem distracted, he said, stepping closer. Has something been bothering you? I swallowed hard, my heart racing. No, sir. Just the storm. His lips curled into a smile that didn't reach his eyes. Storms are inevitable. But in this house, you're safe from them. Don't ever forget that. I could feel the weight of his gaze pressing down on me, suffocating, safe, 
I thought. This place felt like anything but. Is there something you want to tell me, Emily? Kane asked, his voice low and menacing. I hesitated, but before I could answer, Daniel appeared in the doorway. There you are, he said casually, his presence immediately easing the tension. Kane, I think we need to discuss those contracts. Kane's eyes flicked from me to Daniel, and without a word, he turned and left the room. Daniel lingered for a moment, his kind eyes meeting mine. Stay strong, he whispered before following Kane out. As the thunder roared again, I realized the real storm was inside me, growing stronger each day. The following morning, I found a note tucked under my door. It was from Daniel, the handwriting neat but hurried. Meet me by the garden at midnight. We need to talk. My heart raced as I read the words over and over. A sense of urgency hung in the air, and I knew something was about to change. At midnight, I slipped out of my room, careful not to make a sound. The house was eerily quiet, the only noise being the soft patter of rain from the lingering storm. When I reached the garden, Daniel was already waiting, his face shadowed under the dim light of a lantern. Emily, he whispered, stepping closer, it's time to get you out of here. I stared at him, the weight of his words settling in. Out of here? But how? Kane. I shook my head, fear tightening in my chest. He'll find out. He'll come after me. Daniel grabbed my hands, his gaze intense. Not if we do this right. I've seen what Kane does to people. He uses them until there's nothing left. I won't let that happen to you. But why? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. Because you deserve more than this life, Emily. I can't watch him trap you any longer. He squeezed my hands, a flicker of desperation in his eyes. You have to trust me. For a moment, I was torn between the fear of what could happen and the hope that maybe, just maybe, there was a way out. I nodded slowly, my heart pounding. Tomorrow night, Daniel said softly, we leave. The days passed in a haze of fear and desperation. Daniel had secured everything we needed to escape. A car, false documents, and a new place far from this nightmare. The plan was simple at least on paper. We'd leave in the dead of night when Nicholas Kane was away, and David was too drunk or distracted to notice. But with every hour that passed, I felt the noose tightening around me. David's presence had become more suffocating, his obsession more apparent. I knew it was only a matter of time before he acted on his threats. Daniel had warned me to be ready. Tomorrow night, he said, his voice steady but tense. We're leaving for good. I clung to that promise as if it was my last hope. I couldn't afford to think about what might happen if we were caught. I had to believe in our escape, but deep down, I could feel the storm brewing. The next day dragged on endlessly. Nicholas was away on one of his mysterious business trips, and David had been unusually quiet. I could feel the tension in the air, like the house itself was holding its breath. Daniel and I didn't speak much, but every time our eyes met, I saw the same determination mirrored in his gaze. This was our only shot. When midnight came, I was ready. My heart pounded in my chest as I slipped out of my room, the small suitcase clutched tightly in my hand. The house was eerily silent, the hallways dark and empty. I moved as quietly as I could, my breath shallow with fear. Daniel was waiting for me at the back door, his face tense but focused. You okay? He whispered, his hand brushing against mine. I nodded, even though I wasn't sure if I was. Let's just go. He opened the door, and we stepped out into the cold night air. The garden stretched out before us, the tall stone walls on the edge of the property looming like sentinels. Beyond them was freedom. Daniel had parked the car just outside, ready to take us far away from here. But as we moved toward the back gate, a voice cut through the stillness, freezing me in my tracks. Leaving without saying goodbye, I turned slowly, my heart dropping into my stomach. David was standing in the shadows, his lips curled into a sickening smile. His eyes gleamed with malice, a predator who had just cornered his prey. Two of Nicholas's guards flanked him, their faces cold and expressionless. My worst nightmare had come true. David. I whispered, my voice trembling, please, just let us go. David's smile widened as he stepped closer. You really thought you could just walk out of here? That you could leave me? His voice was low, dangerous. I told you, Emily, you belong to me now. Daniel moved in front of me, his body tense, ready for a fight. Back off, David, he said through gritted teeth. This ends now. 
David chuckled darkly. Oh, you're going to stop me, Daniel? What are you going to do? Call the police? You know they can't touch my father. You'll never get away. My pulse raced, panic surging through me as I realized the gravity of the situation. We were trapped. David was right. We couldn't run. Not with him and his guards blocking the way. But Daniel didn't falter. Emily, run, Daniel ordered, his voice hard and urgent. I'll hold them off. No. I grabbed his arm, fear gripping me. I'm not leaving without you. David's laughter echoed through the garden, a cruel, mocking sound. How touching. But it's too late for that. You're not going anywhere, Emily. He signaled to the guards, who began advancing toward us. My mind raced, searching for a way out, but there was none. We were outnumbered, outmatched. David was right. No one could touch Nicholas Kane, not with the power he held over the city. But then I heard it, faint at first, but growing louder with every second. The distant sound of sirens. David's smile faltered for the first time, a flicker of confusion crossing his face. The guards paused, glancing at each other, unsure of what to do. Daniel's eyes lit up with hope. It's over, David. The police are coming. David's face twisted with rage. You think the police will stop us? My father owns them. You're a fool if you think they'll save you. But the sirens were getting closer and soon, the blue and red lights illuminated the walls of the garden. The gates burst open, and several police officers stormed in, weapons drawn. Behind them was a man I recognized, Detective Harrison, the one officer who had been trying to bring Nicholas Kane down for years. David Kane. Harrison shouted, his voice commanding, step away from them now. David's eyes darted between the approaching officers and us, his fists clenching. His arrogance faltered, replaced by panic. You can't do this, my father. Your father can't protect you this time. Harrison cut him off, stepping forward with authority. We have enough evidence to bring him down, and you're coming with us. The guards hesitated, looking to David for orders, but he was too stunned to speak. His carefully constructed world was crumbling before his eyes, and for the first time he realized there was no escape. David, you're under arrest, Harrison said, his voice cold, for assault, kidnapping, and conspiracy. David's face contorted with rage, but there was nothing he could do. The police moved in, cuffing him and his guards. I stood frozen, watching as they led him away, disbelief washing over me. It was over. The nightmare was finally over. Daniel wrapped his arms around me, pulling me close. You're safe now, he whispered, his voice filled with relief. It's over. Tears welled up in my eyes as the weight of everything finally hit me. We had made it. We were free. The sun was just beginning to rise as we drove away from the mansion, leaving the chaos of the night behind us. The city, once a place of fear and danger, now felt like a distant memory. I glanced at Daniel, his hand resting on mine as he drove, his expression calm but determined. We did it. I whispered, still trying to wrap my head around everything that had happened. Daniel smiled softly, his thumb brushing against my hand. Yeah, we did. It was hard to believe that just hours ago, we had been on the edge of losing everything. But now, with David and Nicholas behind bars, we had a real chance at a new life. A life free from fear, free from the shadows of the Kane family. As we left the city behind, the horizon stretched out before us, wide and full of possibility. I didn't know where we were going or what the future held. But for the first time in a long time, I felt hopeful. Daniel glanced at me, his eyes filled with a warmth that made my heart swell. Where do you want to go? He asked, his voice soft. I looked out at the road ahead, the rising sun casting a golden light over the landscape. Anywhere, I said with a smile, as long as it's with you. And with that, we drove into the dawn, leaving the past behind us and embracing the endless possibilities of the future, together.